Good evening. Welcome to the August 2nd, 2023 School Committee meeting. Um, item 1.1, District Vision and Core Values. The Barnstable Public Schools educates the whole child by creating a student-centered school culture that addresses students' physical, social, emotional, and academic needs by creating a safe and healthy learning environment in which students are challenged, supported, and engaged. Core values. In Barnstable Public Schools, we value commitment, collaboration, and community. Commitment. We are dedicated to the continuous learning and growth for all. Collaboration. We work together while keeping student needs at the center of all decision making. Community. We build strong, respectful partnerships and support student success. Item 1.2. Video or audio recording of meeting. I remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast on channel 18. I also remind any member of the public who wishes to make an audio or video recording of the open session of this meeting to first notify me as the vice chair and I will then inform the public of the recording as required by the open meeting law. Item 2.1, approval of school committee meeting minutes, July 19, 2023. Motion to approve uh, school committee meeting minutes, July 19, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 2.2, public comment. Public comment will be limited to three minutes per individual and 30 minutes total. There will be no debate or action taken on public comment items. The committee will take items under advisement or the individual will request an item to be placed on a future agenda. The vice chair will also allow public comment at her discretion during the meeting. Seeing no one for public comment, public comment is closed. Item 2.3, school committee comments and subcommittee liaison reports. Peter, do you have anything? No, I don't. Okay, Andre, do you want to do yours after I do the routine committees, or do you want to go? I can go ahead? after. Okay. Uh, po policy subcommittee uh, met on July 21 and finished Section J, which is on this evening's agenda for a first read, and started Section K. The next meeting is Friday, August 19 at 1 p.m. via Zoom. The subcommittee for the school attorney evaluation met on July 28, set the timeline and the procedure for the evaluation, and which expect, is expected to be completed by the end of August. The next meeting is August 17th at 8 a.m. The subcommittee for the purpose of soliciting and reviewing RFPs for potential consulting legal firms met on July 28 to set the timeline and the procedure for the process. The procurement officer for the town also attended to help us, and the next meeting is scheduled on August 17 at 8 a.m. Andre. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, it is August. Uh, we had a good uh, July, uh, but we can begin to feel the school year uh, approaching, at least that's me, uh, when we turn over into August, uh, you know, I just kind of, I reset. Uh, nonetheless, Barnstable uh, remains a large, diverse, and dynamic district, uh, and so we have uh, a few uh, highlights uh, to note. Uh, first of all, a kindergarten uh, registration right around the corner. Again, open to children who turn five uh, by uh, September 1st, uh, but so something to, to keep in mind, uh, no, no time like the present, uh, again, as I said, with the school year approaching. Uh, register now uh, for kindergarten, beginning yourself on that educational journey. Uh, additionally, in terms of our fall sports, uh, the registration deadline is August 18th. Um, again, just something to keep in mind. It, it will go faster than you think, uh, and we know that our uh, fall athletes uh, have begun their preparations uh, in earnest, uh, I know a number of uh, our athletes are in camps and are preparing vigorously uh, for, the, for the fall season. Uh, and so just to keep in mind, 
uh, BHS Fall Sports Registration, open now, uh, family ID online, uh, and that will conclude on August uh, 18th. Uh, bus pass pickup. Um, again, uh, let's uh, see here in terms of our bus pass pickup. Uh, mark the dates. As you can see, Wednesday, uh, August 23rd, Thursday, August 24th. Uh, at the intermediate school from 7 to 445 just to get ourselves into those routines uh, Of course, we have two days. I believe of school a uh, prior to Labor Day get those out of the way uh, Going into the school year. Uh, this is something I'm happy to report and very hopeful that the weather uh, is Cooperative for us the seventh annual unity day will be this Friday from 4 to 7 p.m uh, right here on the town green uh, feud music Dunk Tank, uh, Officer Morrison, uh, Chief Sonnabin, uh, others getting the Dunk Tank. Uh, it's just a great opportunity, something of a community uh, cookout. So I would really encourage people uh, to attend Fun for All Ages, and that will be uh, this Friday, uh, 4 to 7 p.m. here on the Town Green. Just wanted to report the leisure programs uh, are up and running, uh, and these take place at many of our area schools. Uh, it's a good opportunity, uh, not just for the young people, but also many of the counselors are students. I myself worked at the uh, leisure programs when I was um, in high school, so good opportunity to make a few dollars, give back to the next generation, and then, of course, our young student, students need things to do and, and activities uh, for themselves to remain uh, focused and moving in the right directions. Uh, so the leisure programs uh, took place and are taking place uh, through the month of August uh, at many of our area schools. And then just mo to conclude, this is the uh, students at the Barnstable Community Innovation School uh, who uh, sung community, excuse me, patriotic songs uh, to conclude the school year. wonderful to have the children here they were amazing there were so many great songs and we had great attendance and it's just so nice to have the kids here for the adult for the seniors and everybody that attended we want more of these kinds of programs and we've been amping that up and this is just the most wonderful way to kick off the summer with these awesome patriotic songs and these adorable children so we're very happy to have them here today yes yeah, so that was our students at the Barnstable Community 
Innovation School singing patriotic songs. And I'll conclude, I was glad that they sung Take Me Out to the Ball Game. I am a diehard Hyannis Harbor Hawks fan. Uh, Harbor Hawks finished second in the Cape League uh, and will have their first playoff game uh, this Saturday at McKean Field, if anybody's interested. So that was good that they finished with Take Me Out to the Ball Game uh, singing that song and wishing the Harbor Hawks and also the Katua Cataliers good luck in the postseason. Thank you, Andre. Item 2.4, Assistant Superintendent's Report. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so I have a few uh, updates uh, around summer, um, start of school, as Andre referred to. Um, so I'll give you some important dates. Uh, but just a couple things on the horizon. So our Summer Leadership Institute, um, which is our annual Summer Leadership Institute, uh, will be held next week uh, at Barnesville High School, August 8th through August 10th. The Summer Leadership Institute brings together the district-wide leadership team to delve into key focus areas for the coming year as outlined in the district improvement plan. Key themes of this year's institute include creating a culture of belonging and shared responsibility for our students. These themes are evident in the content and will be woven through the various presentations to the group. Uh, following closely on the heels of that will be new educator orientation. Uh, it's scheduled for August 22nd through 24th. We're looking forward to welcoming our new educators to the district. Again, our theme uh, carrying it through is creating a culture of belonging and shared responsibility for our students. Uh, while our current new hire list is uh, holding steady at 37, uh, we still have a number of positions to fill. Uh, we are anticipating around uh, 55 new hires in attendance at the orientation. Uh, w this is fairly typical to the numbers we've seen uh, each year uh, for the past four to five years. Uh, we will also be holding a new administrator orientation. Uh, that's actually going to be held on Monday, August 21st. So the week of the 21st is going to be a busy one. Uh, we have eight new administrators in the district, uh, assistant principals, department heads, curriculum coordinators. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the group to connect with one another uh, and gather some uh, important resources and information that will help support them as they settle into their new administrator roles. Uh, new this year, we're also planning to extend this out over the course of the year uh, rather than the one-day orientation. Uh, we have uh, set it up so that there are uh, monthly meetings with uh, a deeper dive into the content from the one-day orientation, trying to schedule those to be time timely with what's happening uh, month by month. Uh, this helps it to mirror a little bit more of how we support our new educators uh, with uh, while they're all will be assigned to mentors and will be meeting with their mentors. Our new educators uh, also have uh, regular meetings uh, at the uh, district level um, to provide some additional resources and supports. Uh, summer programming update. Uh, our first summer PD offering wrapped up last week. We had 18 educators uh, participate in a special education PD session. Um, these, the staff, the participants have earned the required 15 PDPs, professional development points, uh, required for relicensure. Uh, every educator, when they go to uh, renew their professional license, are re one of the requirements is 15 PDPs in the area of special education. Uh, the feedback was extremely positive. Participants found great value in the content uh, presented over the two days, and we're already planning for this to be a recurring session. Um, in part due to the value of the, the PD content, but also uh, to continue supporting our educators in their uh, license renewals. Um, and last meeting, I had shared some information regarding our summer acceleration academies. Uh, so registration is closed for these sessions. We have 75 second and third graders signed up for the Literacy Academy and 38 fourth and fifth graders signed up for the Math Academy. The uh, academies run for one week. Uh, the week prior to the start of the school and both as in the past both transportation and uh, breakfast and lunch are provided for students and this program is funded by a grant that Barnesville was awarded uh, by the Department of Education and then finally it is hard to believe um, but we are already talking about the first day of school uh, but the our next meeting in September occurs after <laughs> the first day of school, so I wanted to make sure uh, I got these dates out as reminders. The first day of school for our grades 1 through 12 students is Wednesday, August 30th. 
The first day of school for our kindergarten and pre-K students is Tuesday, September 5th. Uh, kindergarten and pre-K students will have uh, orientation and screening, which is held on um, August 30th or August 31st. Uh, so parents should reach out to their individual schools if they're not sure of the date or time of the orientation and screening for their child. As a reminder, schools will be closed on September 1st and September 4th for the extended Labor Day weekend. Um, and just also as a reminder, all of this information, if you didn't jot it down, uh, can be found on the school calendar, which is posted on the district website. Thank you. That's Any all. questions? No? All right. Uh, old business, item 3.1, create policy JJH, student late night or overnight travel. Um, I did not receive any uh, questions or feedback. Peter, did you? I did not, no. All right, so. I move to create policy JJH, student late night or overnight travel as presented in tonight's materials. Second. All right. Um, having a motion and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Item 3.2, create policy JJR. JJHR, student travel regulations. Um, I received no feedback. Nor did I. All right. Peter? I move to create uh, policy JJHR, student travel regulations, as presented in tonight's materials. Second. Um, having a motion and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, motion carries unanimously. Item 3.3. Revised policy JJIF athletic concussion policy. I received no comments. No, nor no right. did I. So I'll move to revise policy JJIF athletic concussion policy as presented in tonight's materials. Second. Having a motion and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Item 3.4, revised policy JJIF-R, the athletic concussion regulations. Again, I had no feedback. Again, no, no did I. So I'll move to revise policy JJIF-R, athletic concussion regulations, as presented in tonight's materials. Second. Having a motion and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mo I also, um, motion carries unanimously. Item 3.5, revised policy LB, relations with other schools and districts. I had no feedback. Nope, nor I. Mo so I'll move to revise policy LB, relations with other schools and school districts as presented in tonight's materials. Second. Having a motion and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item 3.6, create policy LBC relations with non-public schools. I had no feedback. Nor I. So I'll move to create policy LB relations with non-public schools as presented in tonight's materials. Second. Having a motion and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. All right. New business. Item 4.1. Approve school committee policies in section J. This is a first read for the entire section. Um, as usual, anybody who has questions or comments can either direct those to me or to Peter, and we will take them back to the subcommittee. Um, this is for approval at the uh, September school committee meeting. Um, also posted beside Section J is the change log. I, when we approved by section, I tried to summarize what the changes were to make it a little bit easier for people to go through. Mm -hmm. Item 4.2, substitute teacher and substitute paraprofessional educational qualifications. Kristen? Um, so we bring this uh, to you. Uh, as uh, a continuation of uh, what was requested last year. Um, we're seeking to waive the uh, credit uh, requirements or qualifications for substitutes and para substitutes um, in your packet. Uh, the, job, the original job descriptions are provided, but also some data from human resources around um, the number of uh, 
substitutes that met the requirement, but also the paperwork that was actually that was uh, actually submitted. Um, you know, as you know, the challenges with staffing, not just in Barnstable, but across uh, the Commonwealth and and the United States, uh, but uh, in particular, we're finding that challenge with our substitute uh, teaching pool. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, make a motion. I move to waive the educational qualifications for the substitute teacher and substitute paraprofessional positions for the 2023-2024 school year. Second. Having a motion and seconded, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Um, finance and facilities business. Item 5.1, approve signing bonuses, paid training for Barnstable Public Schools bus drivers. Sandy, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> okay, so. I know everywhere you go, nobody can find any help. We're in the same exact bus, if you will. <laughs> um, so um, what I'd like to propose is we're, we need sign-on bonuses. I think that would really help if we could get them. Um, it would be, I'd be jumping for joy if we got five people. That would be the highest I would think we would get. Realistically, I'm hoping for two. So if we, um, for the sign-on bonuses, if we went with the two, Hopefully the cost would be between three and four thousand dollars. So, um, and we do have the money in the line for bus drivers because we're short staffed. So we do have that. And I would also like to propose that we offer paid training. Um, and we would pay up to 60 hours total, which is what the state requires. And we would do it at the um, monitor pay rate. So we would be looking at possibly anywhere from 1165 to maybe 2300 to put two people through the full 60 hours and of that paid. Any questions for me? Yeah, I, I did have a question um, because it, it, this is something where there's a need and I, I know um, there's a lot of young people that are looking for opportunities, you know, as you're, you're here after, college, after high school. My, my, my question is, um, what do you need to sign? Do you need a CDL license? What do you need to kind of, if this is something, you know, it's an opportunity to start, um, how can they get involved? Um, well, to start, they have to be, um, they've had to have their license for at least three years. So if they just get out of high school, it's usually 21 by the time they're, you know, they've, they've pretty much had their license, right? So then they go through, they have to have 32 hours of behind the wheel and 28 hours in the classroom. And that is all about driving a big vehicle, which requires them to get a commercial driver's license, which is a class B or a class C, depending on the weight limit. Either one, they have to go through the same test because at the end they do a road test. And once they pass all of that, um, then they'll get their CDL and a school bus certificate. And they also have to have a medical card because they have to have a DOT physical. So they need to carry that as well. Where does that take place, the, the, the training, the classroom? Uh, um, we do our own training with our own trainer, and Five Star does their training with their trainer. So the, tra the classroom training is here? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Sure, and it just uh, if I understand that correctly, this could be an opportunity for young people to acquire their CDL license. Absolutely. If they didn't have it yes. to begin with. Yes. And of course, that's a very valuable licensure to have it is. for future work opportunities. Absolutely. And at this point, too, we also look for van drivers, which is a little bit less of a qualification. It's a 7D license. They still have to go a lot of, through the same training, um, but that allows them a foot in the door, if you will, and then they will, they will want to get themselves better and get that bigger license. So, Sandy, once they're trained, if somebody takes advantage of this opportunity, what is their commitment to be um, employed by the district? Well, so what we most people do and what I proposed was um, that we would have them, we would give them initially like the $500 and then after they've been employed by us and they're licensed for at least, you know, six months in good standing employment, we would give them the balance due. So that gets us through a school year and lets us keep them. What we don't want is people going to us and then jumping over to uh, somebody else for that same thing. So if you talk to a lot of the bus companies and a lot of the people that do the licensing like we do, we're all in agreement. We don't want that to happen either. So a lot of us will look at to see who you've worked for and then be, okay, are you shopping for a bonus or do you want to stay? We want you to stay. 
So like you said, a good opportunity for people to get that license if they want to do it. I know the collaborative is yeah. doing this, and I know that they will not steal Correct. <laughs> bus drivers. They're very, um, most of the districts are pretty cognizant of yes. um, not having, you know, not taking other people's employees, but bringing on an additional pool. Absolutely. And Paul Hilton and I have talked about that a lot because it does mm -hmm. happen, and that's why we want to spread the bonus out a little bit so they don't come to us, get that license, and then take the mm -hmm. bonus and leave. So they kind of have to work for it, and then by the time they get, they're here with us for a little bit, we hope they want to stay with us. Mm -hmm. So, right. hopefully. All right. Any any other questions? No. Uh, no, I'll move uh, to approve signing bonuses paid training for Barnesville Public School bus drivers as follows. 1,500 sign-on bonus for non-CDL drivers to be paid in two installments. Uh, $2,000 sign-on bonus for CDL license holders to be paid in two installments and 20 hours of paid training for new trainees to be compensated the bus monitor rate is presented in tonight's materials. Second. Having a motion and seconded, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you Thank all you very Sandy. much. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Item 5.2, approve signing bonuses for the infant and toddler teachers. Kristen. So again, we're returning to you with, uh, to extend this request. We did this last year um, and proposing to continue the signing bonus, bonus for the teachers, uh, the staff of the infant toddler program. Um, just to provide a little uh, data, last year we um, paid four staff members the signing bonus and uh, six staff members the um, retention or longevity bonus. Um, it is self-funded through the program. Um, and uh, in terms of staffing that we need for this year, we have hired one person to start in the fall and we still have an open teaching position. Uh, so it would certainly be helpful in terms of trying to attract uh, staff to fill that position. Any questions? No, okay. Um, I'll move to approve signing bonuses for infant and toddler teachers as follows. Um, $1,000 sign-on bonus for new uh, daycare staff to be paid in two installments. $500 retention bonus for current uh, BPSDC staff to be paid six months after start of school. And $500 referral bonus for staff referring a candidate who is hired for a BPS CDC position as presented in tonight's materials. Second. Having a motion and seconded, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Yeah. Item 5.3, approve one full-time equivalent special education teacher position at Centerville Elementary School. Welcome, Catherine. Hi. As you may or may not be aware, and thank you, Mr. King, for promoting kindergarten registration. Um, many of our registrations have been completed, and we are continuing to see an influx of students coming to Barnesville Public Schools who have significant disabilities with intensive needs. Um, so we continue to enroll, and we need to meet their needs. That has led us to requesting an additional intensive learning center, substantially separate classroom teacher uh, to fill that need. So we would have five at Centerville because that is where the physical space is at this time. We would be using um, two paraprofessional unfilled vacancies as the cost offset. Uh, teachers can do more responsibilities and tasks than a paraprofessional, though we value our paraprofessionals. So this would be a better use of our funds. Uh, we have more people applying to be teachers than to be paras at this time, so it would meet our students' needs, and we'd be ready to start the school year. Please consider this. Any questions? Okay. Uh, no, but I'll make a motion. I'll move to approve one FTE special education teacher position at Centerville Elementary School. Second. Having a motion and seconded, all in favor? Aye. I vote yes, and motion carries unanimously. Thank you so Thank much you for, for continuing coming. to support our students and the staff who work with them as well. Thank you for coming, Principal White. Okay. 
Item 5.4, fiscal year 23, year end financial overview. Chris Dwelly. Good evening. I have a very short presentation for the committee this evening that outlines our financial position in closing out fiscal year uh, 2023. Mo's just uh, bringing that up for me um, right now. Thank you, Mo. And also, if I wouldn't, if I could ask you to advance the slides for me as well, that'd be very uh, helpful. Um, so the second slide here that uh, starts with FY23 end of year general fund summary. Uh, here's a, a high-level overview of where we closed out uh, the general fund um, this past fiscal year. Um, it's broken down by the three major uh, budgeting categories that we use: our salary and wages, our supplies budget. Uh, as well as our operating. So you see far left is the budget, uh, our revised budget. Next column uh, lists out what we expended for the year. Uh, the third column lists out any uh, existing encumbrances um, that still stand today for any invoices that have come in that have or haven't yet come in that need to be paid for uh, FY23. And then the available budget left over. Um, in the bottom um, right hand side of the screen, um, you'll notice that we are closing the year in the black uh, with approximately $78,000 uh, that'll go back to the school savings account once the books officially close um, next month. So we're in a good overall fiscal position on our general fund for the FY23 operating budget. Um, I'd mentioned it on the encumbrances, but we are still receiving some invoices um, that, uh, you know, for the month of May, for the month of June, um, that'll still be processed out of those uh, encumbered funds that you see there. So again, overall, good position on the, the general fund. The next slide uh, is an overview of our special revenue funds or our revolving funds. Um, overall, um, everything looks good for the year. Um, what we strive to do is we strive to retain a, um, a balance uh, uh, that you'll see in the net balance on June 30th, 2023, the second to last column there on the right. Um, what we strive for is to have one year's worth of expenses in reserves. So that's what we look to. So we look at our expense line and we hope to have at least that or if not more in that net balance there. Um, and then the last column is the net change, just the fluctuation in the transactions between the beginning of the fiscal year and the end of the fiscal year. Um, three particular accounts that I would highlight for uh, the committee this evening, nothing to be concerned of, but three accounts that uh, we are looking at. The first is the school choice tuition fund. Um, we are uh, using more funds uh, each year to supplement the operating budget than we're receiving in revenue. So it's just something that we wanna be cognizant of if that continues to occur in, uh, in, the, in the coming years. Uh, the second account that I point out is the school athletic revolving um, that spent a little bit more than they took in uh, this year, something that we'll continue to monitor and work with uh, our partners uh, on that fund. And then the last is the, uh, on the homeless transportation. Um, there was a slight delay uh, from the state posting the revenues to the districts, and so we're just waiting for a revenue to post on that. So we'll see an increase actually in uh, our available balance in that particular account. Um, but again, overall uh, revolving funds are in a, a good place to close the year. So just ask the question, the school choice tuition fund. So basically you're saying we're paying more for kids to leave our our town than are coming into our town? Is that basically no, no, it? Um, uh, the point was that uh, we expended $805,000 total out yes. of that account to supplement the operating budget where we only brought in $533,000 approximately in revenue from the tuition in revenue. And so that if we continue to use more 
to supplement the operating budget. And it's not necessarily just one for one for tuition. Okay. If you recall, right. we just used, okay. uh, actually two weeks ago, the school committee approved $150,000 okay. to transfer for the cybersecurity. So I just wanted I to make the point that yeah. you have yeah, something that we should continue to monitor as we build the budget each year. All right, thank you. Yep. And Hi. lastly is the Hi. school, oh, did you have a question, Kathy? Okay. Uh, lastly is our uh, school savings account. Um, so I just wanted to provide a, uh, our starting balance at the beginning of the fiscal year, a breakdown of all the expenditures um, that the school committee's appropriated uh, this year, and then our uh, ending balance um, at the end of this fiscal year. Uh, in the coming months, again, as we close the books uh, and things are finalized at the state, um, we'll see what our uh, what additional revenue will be posted uh, to our school savings beyond the seventy-eight thousand um, dollars in um, expense savings that we recognized in uh, in the general fund. And that's it. Um, in your packets beyond the presentation are two detailed reports. Um, one is broken down by a school site uh, that shows you the budgets, what were expended, the encumbrances, and where each school site ended the year as well as a full detail uh, budget report line by line that breaks down the salary, wage, the salary and wages as well as all of our operating expenses. Mm -hmm. I just had a question concerning the athletic revolving um, budget and the, uh, why was that higher than anticipated? Uh, so in looking at that account, it looked like um, in years past there was uh, the operating budget was helping uh, support some of the revolving fund expenses in that particular fund uh, that didn't occur this year. And so that's something that we're going to need to be mindful of as we build out the FY25 budget is to make sure that we are uh, identifying our true costs um, on the athletic general fund side as well as the athletic revolving fund side and then make sure that everything balances out moving forward. So along the lines of that to follow up on Andres, um, with the change in the mascot, were, uh, weren't there additional expenditures over the past few years to update the uniforms and would some of that have come out of that revolving fund. Yep, there have been uh, to that point and there have been some additional one-time um, capital type of expenses uh, that have come out of that account. So um, again, we're ending the year in a positive balance and something that, you know, we'll make sure that we're working with the athletic director and the athletic team over there to uh, make sure that account remains healthy moving forward. Okay. Peter, any questions? Oh, I'm good, thanks. Um, so I did look over all the detailed reports. Do you anticipate needing any changes to the uh, current fiscal year budget based on what the uh, variance report showed? Uh, we don't anticipate any transfer requests or any changes. Um, again, where it stands today is we've got a surplus uh, of available funds around $78,000. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the books should close um, for the year. As it relates to the individual line item accounts, um, we wanted to just let those accounts um, kind of close out where they were, so whether they were in deficit um, or whether they were in the positive. Um, and we do that so that that will help us as we build the fiscal year 25 budget by being able to go back and actually seeing what the true activity in those accounts um, was. But nothing's anticipated that you need to change for fiscal year 24s. What I oh, I see. That's what uh, I no, heard. no, not okay. at this time. Yep. yep. All right. Any other questions? Okay. All set. Thanks, Chris. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, detail that you provided, Chris. Thank you. Um, item 5.5 approved contract for the executive assistant to the superintendent. Um, after the July, during the July executive session, uh, the contract for the executive assistant was approved and now we need to approve that in open session. I move to approve a new three-year contract for the executive assistant to the superintendent, Jen Krusek, from August 25th, 2023 to June 30th, 2026 with a base salary of 83000 
$365.11 and a stipend of 6500 in other conditions as presented in tonight's meeting. Second. Having a motion and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Item 5.6, approve fiscal year 24 grants, gifts, and donations. Any questions for Mr. Dwelly about the materials that were posted? Okay. Hearing none? No. Nope. Motion? No. I uh, make a motion to approve FY24 grants, gifts, and donations as outlined in tonight's materials. Second. Okay. Having a motion and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, I vote yes. And motion carries unanimously. Used to five people. <laughs> um, Item 5.7, approve accounts payable warrant, fiscal year 24, warrant number five. I'll make a motion to approve accounts payable warrant, FY24 warrant number five in the amount of $346,174.90. Second. Having a motion and seconded, all in favor? Aye. And I vote no, motion carries. And that concludes our meeting. Could I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.